All right, welcome back everyone. Um, I want you guys to keep up with the fantastic work. I saw so much great analysis last week. Thank you so much for your questions. Keep them coming. For chapter 23, we are looking to the 17th century in all of Europe, and I'm going to uh, first focus here on Italy. And this a historical context for Italy is still definitely the Counter-Reformation, this um, kind of reinvigoration of the church in the um, in the face of millions leaving for new Protestant um, approaches to Christianity. We're also going to look to the north, um, particularly the Dutch Republic, and this is the golden age of Dutch history. We're going to talk about people like Rembrandt, um, Jan Vermeer, these uh, great icons of Dutch art. We're also going to go to France and look at uh, Louis XIV, the Sun King, who redesigns a French court at Versailles, outside of Paris. And this is the subject of your primary document reading for Friday. And so you'll want to pay particular attention to this section and um, make sure that you um, th make sure that you listen and take notes to that part of the lecture before you read the primary document. We're also going to look at one of the most famous paintings in European art history, and that is the painting of Las Meninas by a Spanish painter named Velázquez. So, in terms of the subject matter for paintings, um, in, a, in the Italian-led Counter-Reformation, and of course this is the era of imperialism and colonialism, so it's not just about the Counter-Reformation at home in Europe, but it's also about spreading the message of the Catholic Church um, to new parts of the world. And we'll see stories of saints and holy people that are meant to inspire and meant to build an emotional connection um, to these, um, to these uh, figures to look up to. In Northern Europe, we see a whole host of new subject matter in the Baroque era. This is, um, we see landscapes, the idea that it's, uh, um, images of nature are not just a setting, but they can also be a subject matter in and of itself. We will see genre paintings as well. Genre paintings are scenes of everyday life, not portraits of famous people. But we will also have portraiture, and not just individual portraits, but group portraits emerge as a, an important subject in the Dutch Republic. In terms of the common elements of form in Baroque art, and I will emphasize here, these elements really focus specifically on Italian Baroque art, um, and we, where we will see these really complex compositions with twisted and dynamic figures. We'll also see this sense of drama, the heightened emotion that also goes along with chiaroscuro, which means light, dark in Italian. And um, that is the dramatic contrast between very dark shadows and very bright highlights. Okay, let's start with some architecture though. Um, we last talked about St. Peter's um, as a place that got kind of transformed um, as part of um, the Renaissance Pope's remaking of the Vatican. And this addition, this huge piazza here um, in this keyhole shape, is Bernini's contribution to St. Peter's during the Baroque era. Bernini is one of the most important Baroque architects and sculptors. He worked primarily in Rome. And the, um, you know, right in front of St. Peter's Basilica here, uh, the church needed some sort of design that would bring order to the open piazza and also to accommodate large, large crowds that gather on feast days like Easter when the Pope stands um, high up on a balcony. This is the picture here we see from the Pope's balcony where he delivers important addresses. And what Bernini comes up with is this dynamic shape, almost like the arms of the church are extending out from the facade of St. Peter's Basilica to give us all a big uh, church imperial hug here. The colonnade that surrounds the piazza, we see that down below, these are massive, huge columns. There's actually four rows, rows of columns. You can see the human scale here. It's meant to, um, it's, 
it's meant to overpower. It's meant to inspire awe um, using this monumental order in this way. And if the square and the circle are to Renaissance design, the oval is to Baroque design. The oval is, um, is more dynamic, more interesting than the circle, this perfect geometric shape that speaks more to that Renaissance need for order, for um, uh, strict classicism. Baroque architecture, Baroque design um, breaks away from that classical, uh, from that classical tradition. So I mentioned that Bernini was also a sculptor, and here we see yet again another version of David, the Old Testament underdog hero, and. Of course, the classic comparison is to think about Bernini's David alongside Michelangelo's David. Not only are these two sculptors um, presenting entirely different figures, you know, we have the kind of classical contrapposto stance of Michelangelo's David versus this twisted, contorting, bending figure of Bernini's David. But those, dis, uh, those differences have a lot to do with the moment of battle that's being depicted. If you remember back um, to um, our class a few weeks ago, we talked about how uh, David, uh, how Michelangelo is choosing this moment pre-battle. David is collecting himself. Um, see the stone for his slingshot in his right hand. Bernini has chosen to heighten the drama and emotion, and he depicts to us the scene mid-battle. Look at how his David is so intently staring at his foe, and he has pulled his slingshot back. We are witnessing this moment right about when he is ready to fire off the rock that will do away with Goliath. Look at this difference in their expressions. We see this kind of calm, contemplative gaze on the right in Michelangelo's version, whereas Bernini's, we have this deep, furrowed va uh, brow. He's biting his lips. That is real um, theatrical um, intensity here. We can also see how this Baroque um, dynamism and energy works in sculpture so well because, you know, no matter how, um, everywhere we move around the David sculpture, this it looks different. We really are encouraged to be more interactive with this and to walk completely around, and it reveals all of these different elements of the sculpture. One of Bernini's most famous works is the depiction of Saint Teresa, and she is one of the most popular saints of the Counter-Reformation. So a mystic means somebody who has had this kind of intense emotional connection with the divine in some way. And St. Teresa writes about how she had this experience where an angel came down and appeared to her and began to pierce her body with an arrow. And that's exactly what we see here in Bernini's depiction. This sweet, smiling angel um, stabbing Teresa, and she talks about how this experience transported her to a state of rel religious ecstasy where she becomes one with God. This is not the austerity, the cool intellectualism of the Renaissance, but this is an ecstatic vision. We see physical anguish. We see all of this um, drama, and we see these kind of diagonal compositions here in the figure, even the way uh, Santa Teresa's uh, um, arm and feet kind of float off that cloud. This is an altarpiece in a side chapel in a church in Rome, and um, it actually uses here, we see this kind of architectural device, it hides a window above. And so Bernini's actually adding golden rods here to create this kind of dramatic lighting um, from above, taking advantage of that upper window. All right, let me just talk about Caravaggio here briefly. He is the painting equivalent of uh, Bernini. And this painting depicts a story from the Gospel of Matthew, where Matthew here is a tax collector. He's so focused on his money, he has not even seen that Jesus has entered this room and is pointing at him calling him out to say, come, be a disciple, work with me. 
this is such a great um, this is such a great kind of slice of life moment here because we have all these different direct, uh, inter reactions, excuse me, of the figures on the table where there's kind of shock, disbelief. Matthew hasn't even realized that somebody has entered the room. And we see a very humble, lowly setting. This is, uh, you know, for a holy uh, story, a story of somebody who's going to become a trusted advisor of Jesus. This makes this, um, it makes the story of Matthew much more relatable to us. And that's part of the mission of the Counter-Reformation. We can identify with these figures. They're not wearing classical togas. They're wearing um, typical dress of Italy at the time. And this hand gesture here, that should look familiar to us because we've seen it before in the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Look at that gesture. Anyone in Rome who would be looking at this painting would have see, um, would know that Caravaggio is referencing Michelangelo here. And Caravaggio is a master of chiaroscuro, that technique of extreme dark. We can see that here. But then also these bright highlights, this bright, stark line here of the light source, the unknown light source coming in from the right, the way it hits Christ's cheek, the faces of these figures. All right, you guys, when we come back, the next video we're going to talk about Las Meninas, and then we're going to go north.